At this time, I'd like to turn uh, this celebration over to Luke LaHaye. And Luke is uh, a nine-year veteran of 4-H. He's gone a long, long way in uh, pursuing all the good things that 4-H do, does for young people. And uh, he started out as a 4-H member in Nash County under the auspices of Sandy Hall and uh, some of the others there in Nash County. And he's now a uh, state president of the 4-H Council. And in his work, uh, he, or in this role, he's been literally from Murphy to Manio. And of course, in leadership roles, uh, all people learn how to uh, proceed in parliamentary procedure and public speaking and uh, things of that nature, and he's done a wonderful job. <clears throat> And uh, take note of the nice green blazer he's wearing this morning. Uh, he's not a golfer. He's not, he's not from the Masters. Uh, 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 Kelly Green is a 4-H color. And so he is uh, wearing that color proudly. So uh, join me as we welcome Luke LaHaye. Come on, Luke. Thank you, sir. Uh, will everyone please stand for a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Now will you please remain standing for the 4-H pledge. I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Uh, thank you, Luke. Uh, Luke has uh, spent a couple of years at Nash Community College, and he is now transferring to NC State uh, beginning in January. And his role as state president of the 4-H Council will continue till next July, so he'll still be very active in all of that as well. And he aspires to uh, get into some, some type of agribusiness, some kind of agricultural corporation, uh, business type of work as he uh, finishes his education. Our speaker today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the circles of extension service and work is no stranger. And we are tickled to have the state director of cooperative extension with us today, Travis Burke. Uh, Travis is uh, like a 33-year veteran with the Cooperative Extension Service. He's a native of Pequimans County down east. He makes his home currently when he's able to get there uh, in uh, Elizabeth City, but he spends most of his time, needless to say, in Raleigh. And he's over the uh, entire network of the Cooperative Extension Offices which, uh, as I said already before, from Murphy to Manio, 100 counties. So that's quite a role and quite a, he's got a lot on his plate. And uh, he started out as a, for, uh, as a livestock agent uh, down east, and he's uh, weathered the storm, and he's prevailed, and he's done a wonderful job, and he's a dear friend to all of us. So join me as we welcome uh, Dr. Travis Burke. Travis. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't know what Mr. Phillips was going to say, so I'm, I didn't know what Mr. Phillips was going to say. He was very kind. I'm going to get over here if I can. Okay, good morning, uh, glad to be here today. Hope everybody had a nice breakfast. Uh, this is, uh, always enjoy coming to events like this. It always uh, reminds me of um, when everybody's here and together and on one accord, it's sort of like uh, going to the revival because we're all thinking about the same thing. So, uh, so yeah, <laughs> thank you, brother. And so, uh, so anyway, we, we really appreciate uh, you all coming. This is a, uh, a great event, a great time of year. Uh, this basically is National 
uh, Farm City Week. I believe it actually officially starts, started like on Monday. Usually it's like the week of Thanksgiving. So there's a, functions like this all over the country, and uh, this is a really good way to celebrate. I just want to just, uh, first of all, just ask just a show of hands, how many of you uh, here uh, were, uh, were raised on a farm? Okay, very good. Okay, and now everyone else, if you would raise your hand. Okay, very good. One common thread is we all have to eat. So that's very important. So a lot of times when uh, the legislature and Congress and, and Washington, when they're thinking about all these different things and bills and that type thing, it's very important to know that uh, that's one thing we all have in common is we've got to eat. And so it, this is why this is a very important week where we bring farm and city people together. And so what I thought I would talk to you about today is just to give you just a, a bird's eye view of uh, agriculture in North Carolina and across uh, the country. And, uh, and me, as uh, Mr. Phillips mentioned, I'm a farm boy as well. And uh, so I really know uh, what agriculture is all about. And, uh, and as they say, been there and done that. So uh, this is a great, great day to be here. I will say that um, two weeks ago, I believe it was, yeah, I was in um, Indianapolis at a national meeting and uh, believe it or not, you all were like this. They had sweet potatoes. <laughs> and so I really, <laughs> I was sitting there, <clears throat> and I said, <clears throat> and I said, the people sitting at my table, there was about 2,000 people. I said, I bet these are North Carolina sweet potatoes. And they believed me. So we were out there promoting sweet potatoes. And uh, so it worked. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sure that uh, we're in sweet potato country, and uh, we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes as well. I think it's very important that we do understand that um, here right now as we sit, um, the, the population uh, continues to grow around the world. I can remember back in, uh, I believe it was 1991, 92, and I had the opportunity to go to uh, India. And, uh, and I was over there about five weeks, I guess, and got a chance to learn about their culture and that type thing. But one key thing is, back then, I think they had, uh, there were somewhere around 840 million people. Uh, they were the second largest country in the world behind China. Well, now their population has uh, exceeded one billion. And so, um, and if you'll note, a lot of these places that have all these people, uh, they have, there's a, these are undeveloped countries and these are people that are in need. And, uh, and even right here in our state, uh, we have lots of hunger as well. So hunger is right here where we sit and hunger is uh, over in Asia and all over the world. So it's very important that we understand that. You can see that our population here, uh, right now we're at about uh, a little under uh, 8 billion people. So if you'll notice over after about 2030, our population is gonna be getting up close to a nine billion people. They're not making any more land, you all know that. The, where we grow our food, the uh, area where we grow it is shrinking. So agriculture is really a very, very important industry. And it was mentioned to me a minute ago, uh, Mrs. Shaw mentioned that you know, we don't have a lot of young people here, but I think young people really should understand that agriculture is a really bright spot right now. Not just for production agriculture, but there's lots of things and technology and uh, innovation, things that are gonna ha have happened and are gonna happen in agriculture. It's actually very exciting. And uh, we have a university here at NC State, you know, that puts all that together. Uh, you know, for our ag base and our engineering base, I mean, it's very critical uh, for both of our land grants at NC State and AAT in Greensboro. We have two universities right here that where people uh, can go and learn about these innovations as they come about. So it's going to be very, very important in the future. And I think we should encourage our young people to uh, maybe consider working in that area. Uh, you can look here and see the revenue here. We're about an $80 billion uh, agricultural industry here in North Carolina. It's very important. Sweet potatoes are a big part of it. 
I just wanted you to, to, to know that because uh, here in Nash County, you can see the data there on your table there. Uh, and you notice the, the average age of farmers up there about 57, which has been about that age now for a while. It's been sort of creeping up just a little bit. And uh, so, you know, the average age of our farmer is increasing, but there's fewer and fewer people going into that industry. You can look at sweet potatoes here. I understand that uh, either Nash or Sampson back and forth usually won. You all in this room would probably say Nash County is ranked first in sweet potatoes. And if you want to, that sounds good to me. Um, here you can look at the uh, income here uh, uh, by commodity here uh, in uh, Nash County. And again, you can see that on your table. So what I wanted to do is just to sort of show you kind of where we're going with uh, our extension outreach. And, we're very excited about it, as I mentioned before, because we have just sort of and moved through, we're working on our second year of our strategic plan for agriculture here, or cooperative extension. And these are the three areas that we're gonna be focusing on um, from this day forward. And uh, we've just changed our uh, core programming model to these uh, three programming areas, which fits very nicely into what we've been talking about, and this sort of ties in very well with, our, um, with what we're doing. Uh, here are the different areas here that we're working uh, through here in Cooperative Extension, and this is kind of where we went through our plan because we sort of saw that uh, agriculture was gonna be a number one industry here in this state, and we wanted to sort of focus our attention in this area. As we went across the state and heard from people, uh, this is what we call a word cloud, and the words that you see that are bigger in the word cloud, these are the ones that came up more often as we were going around and getting input from our constituents across the state. All of our stakeholders spoke, we listened, and so this is where we are with our core programming model. Agriculture, again, is big business, tied to one out of 12 jobs. Uh, you know, we. You can see that Americans spend uh, six to seven cents of every dollar on food, but you go in some countries uh, over in Asia and like Japan, they'll spend half of their uh, dollar on agriculture and food. So, I mean, we are very, very fortunate to have a very safe uh, food supply, and we have a plentiful food supply. Um, you, can, you can see here that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, our workforce is involved in agriculture. And here, uh, just to show you that 40% uh, of the global workforce uh, provides uh, jobs in the agricultural sector. So what can we do? Uh, we are here today. This is a farm city event. Um, first of all, how can we sort of bring the farm in the city together? You know, you can thank a farmer for what they do because by, after all, farmers feed you, feed, they're feeding us. We can promote youth in agriculture, that's very important. And maybe consider renewing our commitment in agriculture. And then maybe practice sustainability practices in the agricultural sector. And then maybe use good agricultural practices, which is what we teach in uh, Cooperative Extension. People have to use the right practices. Farmers know what we're talking about when we say uh, gap training, because there's certain trainings that farmers have to go through on the farm so that they can produce a uh, safe product for the consumer. Embrace technology and innovation, uh, and then advocate for agriculture every time you uh, get the opportunity. Another thing, uh, how many of you have heard of Feed the Dialogue? Okay, this is something that um, has been getting kind of popular, but uh, we just want you to know that this is a website. Uh, we'd like you to go there, there's a Twitter feed and uh, sort of uh, thank farmers every chance you get for what they do and for the role that they play in America's agriculture. And uh, what I wanted to do before I end today is I wanted to, if you were reference a card on your table, you'll see um, it's a little half of a card on front and back. This is something that's big, gonna be very, very critical for the future of North Carolina. This is, uh, basically a bond referendum that is going to happen next March. Uh, our legislature put this on the ballot, and, uh, and if you'll note, uh, this bond referendum is uh, one of the big pieces of it is an agriculture piece. 
but there's also lots of components in it. We just wanted you to sort of understand kind of what, um, you know, the bond package was so you could get an idea and feel for it when you go to the polls next spring. But, uh, but this bond is going to have one of the initiatives in there is a uh, plant sciences initiative, and that's what we mean by PSI. Uh, and if you'll see on the front, this is a proposed building that's going to be uh, proposed for NC State University's campus. And in there, uh, that plant sciences initiative is going to focus on interdisciplinary teams working together with partnerships and then to create a world-class facility that will bring farm, city, research, teaching, extension together uh, right here on our campus. It's a $170 million facility. And uh, the bond package includes half of that um, 85 million in that package. In addition, there's also in the bond package um, uh, pieces in there for the National Guard, for the community college system, for infrastructure in the communities in our towns and cities. And so this is a very, very important piece for North Carolina in the future. So what we would encourage you to do is uh, just sort of look at that. If you flip over on the back, you'll see some more information. Um, it has uh, things up there about uh, Connect NC. There's a website, and what we'd like you to do is maybe go to that website, connectnc.com, and you can find out more about it. So we just wanted you to be aware of that, and this is a really uh, important piece of uh, North Carolina's future, and we just wanted you to sort of uh, be aware of that. Here's an example uh, of the Centennial Campus. How many of you have been to the Centennial Campus at NC State? So this is kind of where the proposed building site will be, um, here right over uh, before, right across from the Hunt Library. And uh, here's a sort of a sketch of the facility there on campus. So uh, we just wanted you to sort of uh, get a, just a snapshot of kind of what we're doing and, and how the three things will be coming together uh, here with the teaching research extension and the community as we uh, work together for the future of agriculture. Just wanted you all to see that, okay? <laughs> how many of you know what that is? Very good. Okay, so uh, here you can sort of see kind of what the um, in the sweet potato industry, this is kind of wanted to give you that example, thought that would be fitting today of kind of how the uh, PSI would come together and doing research and uh, working with scientists and research scientists and that type thing there on campus uh, in the new plant sciences facility. And uh, so, and this is kind of how it all came to fruition here um, as we got the, uh, the PSI initiative on the bond package. These are the two guys behind it, um, and I wanted to mention that because uh, not only the PSI uh, initiative, Steve Troxler, our Commissioner of Agriculture, uh, there's going to also be a um, NCDA facility, and, uh, and this is uh, going to be a new building for the Department of Ag. It's also included in the bond package. So I want to just sort of close and say, you know, the farm, family farm is a very, very important part of rural America. Uh, the family farm is still a key for the survival of agriculture here in uh, North Carolina and uh, across America. And uh, it is uh, basically how we get our food. I mean, people really need to understand that food is important. We all like to eat. I know uh, Commissioner Troxler always says, uh, hungry people are mean people. So uh, you don't want to get in somebody's way when they get hungry. So the future is uh, here. Uh, we want you to sort of uh, think about some of these things we've talked about with production ag and jobs and that type thing, education and training. And uh, we just want to thank you all for what you do for agriculture. And uh, we appreciate all you do. And uh, we want you to give yourselves a hand for the work that you do in agriculture in North Carolina. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, continue your applause momentarily and let's thank Travis. He did a wonderful job. Uh, folks, in general, the Extension Service, the Cooperative Extension Service, is one of the best kept secrets uh, in that's going. And of course, it's uh, our grassroots presence locally 
from the Land Grant College of NC State. So it's all about education, and as we go forward with technology, a lot of this uh, information, knowledge, wisdom uh, can be accessed uh, from the computer online, and uh, State College is just bursting at its seams, as you just saw uh, the plant science initiative that's underway and all kinds of good things that are really are going on. Uh, without being arrogant, we are very proud to be residents of Nash County. And Nash County uh, has uh, some industrial presence and has for years, but it's also largely agricultural and continues to be. And uh, to support our farmers, to support our agriculture, we are very indebted to Farm Bureau. And uh, the Farm Bureau Federation or organization is a PAC, P-A-C, that's Political Action Committee. And uh, through the likes of uh, President Larry Wooten and uh, other leaders, they go to Washington, they go to Raleigh and advocate for the farmer and for rural America. And to get on the board of a local Farm Bureau organization, uh, it is hoped that you'll come to the meetings and you'll contribute and you'll be there. And uh, the president of our Nash County Farm Bureau Federation is Greg Bunn. And he's a local farmer, a very good farmer, and he's given a whole lot of time to Farm Bureau uh, to keep it going forward. So at this time, I'm gonna welcome Greg Bunn, president of Nash County Farm Bureau. I had too much of that coffee to hold this mic with one hand. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to welcome you all here this morning. Good to see such a big crowd. Thank our Farm Bureau women for the table decorations, the pumpkins, the gourds came from Fisher Farm in Red Oak. She's always gracious with those. Um, I can't go on without mentioning our Extension Director, who most of you probably know is retiring in uh, December. I've known Charlie for 25 years. He's been a good friend personally. He's really a friend of Farm Bureau. He's always willing to help us in any venture we, we uh, take on. He started, he started, he told me, at the Extension Office in, in uh, Cumberland County. And then he, he became a regional agronomist. And that's, well, I knew Charlie before I knew he was a regional agronomist. They tend to hide pretty good. <laughs> I thought it was the perfect job. <laughs> he did it for 19 years. How many know what a regional agronomist is? How many has ever met one? <laughs> but he, he took the job in Nash County. We were so glad he did. And I said, Charlie, why? You got the perfect job. But uh, he's been, then I went to his office, and you should see it. It's huge. He's got a chair. Probably Z Lamb doesn't have one as good. <laughs> But he's done a really good job, and we're, we're going to miss him. I, I hate to see him go. But at least now, all that time he spends in the rocking chair, he can do so with a clear conscience. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Uh, if anybody's grass or lawn turned brown this year, you know what type of weather conditions we had in the county. Uh, it's probably one of the toughest ones I remember since 1977 would be a probably a good match. It started off fairly normal, maybe a little wet, but then it got dry, then it got hot, then it got hotter and drier, and it stayed on and on. Finally it rained, and, and if you know much about tobacco, tobacco, you fertilize it, it's got to grow out so it'll mature and, uh, and the quality. But once it rained late, it took up a lot of fertilizer. So that delayed the crop a couple of weeks at least. And then we got an early frost, which did a lot of damage to a lot of tobacco that was left in the field late. Cotton, cotton was affected also. So it's been hot, dry, cold, wet, dry, hot. So it was, it was a tough season. But I'm gonna run down our, uh, our crop totals. This came from the Farm Service Agency in Nashville for this year. We had a 33,000 acre soybean crop in Nash County. 
Sweet potatoes, 10,300 acres. They were the second largest crop in the county, which several years ago would, would have been unusual. Tobacco was always the biggest crop. Tobacco had 9,300 acres. Cotton was down probably as much as any major commodity, down to 6,800 uh, acres. Wheat was at 46, peanuts at 1,800, and corn at 1,300, which corn's up. I guess they took some of the cotton acreage. Soybeans took some of the cotton acreages. But just to give you an example of this year and this crop, soybeans, I believe in 2012, there were a lot of soybeans sold $15 a bushel. The price of soybeans right now, a little over $8 a bushel. The yield in 2012 was 38, as I was looking on that. I wouldn't be surprised if the yield this year wasn't going to be half that. So we've weathered a tough, a tough summer, but uh, you know, it's, we always wipe the slate clean when the year's over and start another one with brimming with optimism. It just might not be brimming so much this year. But uh, I want to thank you all for coming again and thank Charlie for his service. And we have another person retiring at the end of December. I want to mention him within RCS, Patrick Evans. Patrick, stand, please. Patrick's been here. How many years, Patrick? Not as long as Charlie, but uh, how many years, Patrick? Have you been? Five, years. five years. But he's retiring at the end of December, so let's give him a hand also. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Greg. I'd like to call forward now uh, Mr. Fred Belfield. Fred is the uh, chairman of the Nash County Board of Commissioners. Uh, Fred, too, is a veteran uh, extension service employee, a county agent. He served in uh, Nash County for many, many years in a variety of roles, and then retired and uh, ran for county commissioner and has uh, done very ably in that role as well. And he has a few remarks from the Board of Commissioners. Fred? Uh, thank you, Parker. Uh, I want to say first before I get into what I'm up here for, Travis, Dr. Travis Burt, when he first came into extension, they sent him to Nash County uh, for a, a nice, good orientation. So he spent some time with us. I always tease him every now and then. I say, you, your foundation started here in Nash County. <laughs> <laughs> we have a good, we have a good acting director up there at, uh, at, on the NC State campus. Well, what I'm up here, and I was really surprised when I heard this announcement that Charlie Tyson would be retired. Uh, he's he's been a good director here in Nash County uh, ever since he's been here, and uh, when you look at the budget that the Cooperative Extension Service have to uh, work with each year because Congress started cutting the budget and putting more of the burden on the states to fund, you know. The Cooperative Extension Service was created by Congress, but they started shifting it to the states. Well then, with tight budgets, the states start cutting too. So you have smaller staff now, which means they got to operate more efficient because some of them are working across county lines. And right now, are we fully staffed in Nash now? Not quite, but almost. Almost. But we're working hard hoping that uh, we can get it completely fully staffed. As Travis said, agriculture is great all around. North Carolina and the United States. We are helping feed a lot of people, undeveloped nations, and that food comes from the United States and a lot of it is from North Carolina. That's why I hate to see Charlie Tyson retire, but we all deserve, after a period of time in our life, to retire and maybe enjoy, take some vacation time, do some volunteer work, and I'm sure you're gonna be called on child. <laughs> and do a lot of volunteer work. But on behalf of the Nash County Commissioners, we will uh, 
recognized them at our Board of Commissioners meeting, but I felt like we need to say something here before, because probably most of you won't be at our commissioner meeting uh, first Monday. We'll say some things about Charlie here. One thing I've noticed about Charlie uh, in being the director of Cooperative Extension Service here, he kept that office moving with a smaller staff. When I was working, it was seven of us, and then they kept reducing. We had four secretaries, and we reduced now down to just one. So it makes the job, I wouldn't, won't say harder, but what it does is make you have to really look at it from a very efficient way in operating. How you operate that office with one secretary when you had four. Each area had a secretary and it is reduced down to four. But Charlie has taken on that role and uh, doing wonderful with it. And we just want to recognize you, Charlie. Here before the people here on Farm City Week, and don't leave us. I know you're going to be moving around and enjoying with your family and spending more time with them. But stop by and encourage those who take those positions that are left vacant and give them some good advice. And I want to say to all of us here today, let's give Charlie Tyson a round of applause for the long service that he has uh, given to Nash County. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude today, I have one brief postscript I'd like to add to this meeting. And uh, we have a special guest, another special guest, so I'll just begin with that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, back by popular demand, our guest today is better known as Hank the Hired Hand. Now Hank's a little bit bashful, so everyone please don't laugh. He's granted me express permission to intercede on his behalf. When it comes to a working knowledge all about the earth and trees, Hank's a walking, talking conservatory of botanical expertise. He says that soil and water go together and make a winning combination, and good agricultural practices help our conservation. Facts about the soil understood by very few will be explained by Hank the Hired Hand in this exclusive interview. So at the risk of sounding verbose and wordy, the contents of this dialogue now just might get dirty. Well, Hank, you've dedicated your life to farming and tending the land, and you've tilled every kind of soil there is from red clay to desert sand. Since the dawn of time and civilization's birth, mankind has discovered many secrets about the earth. We get our food from the crops growing in the fields, and cows graze on pasture lands that blanket our valleys and hills. Precious metals found way down in the earth's deep core, deposits of gold and silver and veins of rich iron ore. Massive pipelines from far away pump natural gas and petroleum into our homes every day. And we still have a command to honor the land. It too has a heart and soul. And way down deep inside the earth, we find our warm combustible coal. And I know you keep reminding me, lest we all forget, we can't live without clean water, and that's a sure bet. Fresh water for bathing and drinking, a fact we can't deny. Take away our water source, Hank. Well, and we'll all lay down and die. I read you loud and clear, old pal, so tell me again, what's the ticket? What? Huh? Oh, you say, I still have a lot to learn before I can really dig it? 
Well, here now, ladies and gentlemen, are the cold, hard facts. Without a plan, we abuse the land, and erosion quickly attacks. Erosion of the soil is a debilitating waste. Bare ground without any cover will disappear without a trace. Raindrops plummet the ground with hard-hitting power, cascading down from out of the sky at 15 to 20 miles per hour. To put a new inch of topsoil on the ground, it takes 500 years of weathering rocks rubbing together and breaking down. And the solution to water pollution is simple, so it seems. Just filter the waters run off into our rivers and streams. Well, Hank, your mind's a reservoir of earth-related knowledge. Things you learned behind that old gray mare, I bet, and a little bit off in college. As for me, I hope you see I want to be a good student. I love the land, you understand, and I want to be wise and prudent. So give me another chance, old pal, and ask me again, now do I dig it? And as a ritual and oblation that honors conservation, I'll walk the streets with a sign and I'll pick it. Topsoil, subsoil, rocks and granite. Make a profile of the earth that's deep and gigantic. When topsoil is disturbed by windy, rainy antics, Cracks and crevices split the ground, causing alarm and anxious panics. On the other hand, topsoil is helped every day when roots and organic matter break down and decay. Now, Hank, I know you are a very religious man. You have faith in the Lord and his steady, guiding hand. A rainbow reminded Noah that God was in control of storms unannounced and calamities yet untold. Never again will a flood cover the entire earth, and we pray a worldwide famine will never threaten our worth. Today we know when a local flood arises, a cover crop on the ground will halt erosion's cruel surprises. Cover crops catch the rainfall, holding water like a sponge, anchoring the soil and holding it in place when the flood waters gush and lunge. Well, Hank, your understanding of conservation really cuts through the cloudy dust. Protecting our soil and water is every man's sacred trust. And just as my heart beats and skips, look at me closely, Hank, and read my lips. We mustn't spoil our healthy soil by being carefree and hypocritic. God made the land and he gave it to man to nurture, love, and dig it. Well, I hate to complain, but it drives me insane to get dirt all over my face. By either name, it's still the same. Dirt is simply soil that's taken out of place. Dirty shoes provoke the blues. Tracking in mud, a domestic disgrace. I tell you, friends, cleanliness ends when dirt becomes soil that's out of place. A soil shirt covered with dirt helped my mama make her case. If she was here today, she would agree and say that dirt is all out of place. Now, here's an accolade ever so true I mustn't leave out of this exclusive interview, and that is clean water and healthy soils are priorities in our nation, promoted and supported by the Nash County Soil and Water Association. So, land and seas, flowers and trees, wind, rain and snow, make up the earth's ecology and the land that we love so. So I'll just keep on enjoying the landscape now and the chirping of the crickets. Thank you, Hank the Hired Hand, for teaching me how to dig it. Give Hank a big hand. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and we are now about ready to conclude. We have a whole lot of sponsors and people who help make this possible. And to conclude our celebration, I'd like to turn it over now to Charlie Tyson. Charlie. Thank you, Parker. How would you like to follow that? <laughs> uh, Thank you, Greg and Parker, Commissioner Belfield. Your words are better than I deserve. Uh, it's been my honor to represent North Carolina State University and serve the agriculture community of Nash County. Uh, I've been very fortunate to have good people 
uh, good leadership above me and uh, to have good dedicated people alongside me. That's, that's meant a lot to me. Um, thank you, Dr. Burke, for a very interesting presentation. Thank you for coming, being here with us. I want to thank each of you for enjoying Farm City Breakfast with us this morning. Rocky Mount's own Kakalaki Coffee provided the, the coffee grounds. And uh, thanks to Mr. Trey Braswell of Braswell Foods of Nashville for producing and uh, donating the healthiest eggs in the marketplace today, Eggland's Best Eggs. Our friends at the Momai Realton Club, they cracked and scrambled and cooked 30 dozen uh, eggs for us today. And uh, we certainly thank you for that. Mr. Ron West of Carolina Grits prepared those delicious, old-fashioned, slowly cooked grits. Uh, Smith's Red and White and Dorches, they gave us some special help in purchasing, purchasing the country ham and the sausage. And Rocky Mount's Krispy Kreme provided some fresh donuts. We thank Nash County Farm Bureau ladies again for decorating the room. They always do a great job. Uh, some food preparation and coordination was provided by the farmer's market manager, Jimmy Winters, with some very special volunteers. We can't do without those volunteers. Hope you'll become one. And finally, Ag Carolina Farm Credit and PNC Bank are the cornerstone sponsors of this event. We, we do have to purchase some things to complete this breakfast, and they make uh, that possible. There are over 430 farm operations here of all sizes in Nash County, and agriculture credit keeps the wheels of agriculture turning. Ag Carolina Farm Credit and PNC Bank, they both understand the financial needs of agriculture and they understand the language of agriculture, which is very important. Part of the educational mission of North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service is education for and about our local agriculture industry. This breakfast helps us remember how important agriculture continues to be in each of our daily lives. As we approach Thanksgiving, I hope you are thankful and take time to give thanks. Have a great week. Thanks for coming. <laughs>